Okay, so we have learned on how to create loops, uh, infinite loops, and also finite loops. And we have seen we have seen the structure on how to do that. So now we're going to see one application of a program loop, which is to create a time delay. Now, time delay is one of the very useful application which is uh, used in various applications. So like one simple example is traffic light. You might have noticed that the red light is turned on for a different duration and the yellow light is turned on for a different duration and the green light is turned on for a different dura duration. So all those systems are making use of time delay. So how long you want a particular light to be turned on? So you use a delay. So there are actually two ways of generating delay. The first method is what we're going to uh, learn tonight. And the second method is by using a timer, which we will learn in chapter 8. So in this chapter, in chapter 2, we will actually see how do we use program loops, this is something which you have learned, right, to generate delay. <clears throat> So let's go here. So we will learn this uh, program loops or time delay based on example. So here you see we have a task create a 0 0.5 millisecond time delay given the frequency oscillation is 40 megahertz. Now, whenever you want to create a time delay, you need to have some sort of what we call as the frequency, oscillation, frequency oscillation. Now, I missed something here just now. So the PIC18 uses a crystal oscillator or a RC circuit to generate the clock signal needed to control its operation. So have you all learned RC circuit? What is RC circuit? Resistor and capacitance, right? What kind of wave it produces? Sinusoidal wave, right? And also there, uh, there, there is this crystal oscillator. This is a crystal which uh, generates a certain types of uh, signal, sinusoidal signal. Uh, for example, like quartz. Now, some of your old analog watches, you have quartz. Those quartz generate a particular type of frequency. So it emits frequency. So the PIC18 can either use crystal oscillator or you can use that RF circuit. Now, most of the time, It will be this is how a crystal oscillator looks like. Can you all see? So this is a quartz crystal oscillator. Uh, do you see there's something printed on top of this? It shows the what's the frequency in megahertz. So this 16 means is generate 16 megahertz. So most of the time, generally, you'll use 20 for PIC18. So you have different different frequencies. Uh, you can use oscilloscope to actually check the output of this component, and you'll see you can get a sinusoidal signal with uh, almost close to whatever frequency that's mentioned there. So digital hardware requires this base clock, right? If you have learned in digital logic, there's always there should be a base clock. So in this case, the base generating frequency would be either crystal oscillator, this one, or the RC circuit. Now, most of the time, um, if you remember the first class that we had semester, I distributed the, the kit, right? On the kit, you have this crystal oscillator, and then you see it's written 20 on top. Is that okay? 
So for us to generate delay, we need to know the frequency oscillation because we're going to use it in our calculation. So that is why whenever we are doing, we are dealing with time delay, the frequency oscillation is uh, required for us to know. If at all, if you come across any question that doesn't provide the frequency oscillation, then you can ask because without it, you can't do the calculation. So here the task is to create a 0.5 millisecond time delay given the frequency oscillation is 40 megahertz. So these are the steps that we're going to do. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to create, okay, now I follow the flow here. First thing that you need to do, uh, need to do is need to find out how long is one instru uh, instruction execution time. Why are we interested in one instruction execution time? Anyone know? Because we are using instruction to generate delay. So we want to know one instruction, 16 bit instruction is taking how long? So that's why we want to find out. So the formula is one instruction cycle is equals to 4 times 1 over frequency oscillation. So this is fixed. Four times one over frequency oscillation. So in this case, it is four times one. What is the frequency oscillation here? 40 megahertz. So how much are we getting? Can you please calculate? How much are you getting? Is it correct? 100 and a second. Is it correct? So, what have we found out that one instruction cycle? Oh, sorry. What I meant was uh, one instruction execution time is actually referring to one instruction cycle. So, why are we interested to know uh, the do, uh, how long does one instruction cycle takes? Is because If you look at your instruction set, if you look at your instruction set, do you see the cycles? Top. There's a mnemonic operands description and then the cycles. Each instruction is denoted by how many number of cycles it takes. So that's why we are actually interested to know one cycle will take how long. Some instructions will take two or three cycles. So done. So first thing is what? To find out one instruction cycles or one instruction will take how long. Because instructions are executed in terms of cycle. How, how many cycles it take? One cycle, two cycle or three cycle? To execute in this case so we want to know one instruction cycle is how long and then the second thing that we're going to do is we are going to create a basic time block of two microseconds now the concept of basic time block is something similar to your uh, analog watch just to give you an example one minute is consists of how many seconds 60 so if you break down what is the basic block one second is the base time block right so if you loop that one second 60 times, what do you get? One minute or 60 seconds. So the idea is also similar. We want to get, we want to create a basic time block. And then this basic time block, we are going to loop it to generate the required time delay. Are you able to understand? Just now I give the example of Let's say you have one second is your base time. If you loop that one second 60 times, what you'll get? 60 seconds or one minute. So same thing here. Our one second that we're going to create is two microseconds. 
And this two microsecond, we are going to loop a certain number of times to achieve our required time delay. Are you able to understand at this point the concept? No. Which one that you don't understand? The basic time law. Okay, let's say you have one second in your digital, in your analog watch that you have in your hand, wristwatch. Every time the tick is what? One second, right? The one second, if you loop it 60 times, what, have, what, what will happen? You will get 60 seconds or one minute. Do you understand that part? So the basic time block here is one second. One second, if you move it 60 times, or we can use the word loop it 60 times, you will get 60 seconds or one minute. Is that okay? So the same concept, we are going to create a basic time block. So the basic time block is, of course, not one second. It is two microsecond. That is our basic time block, which is equivalent to that one second. Of course, one second, if you loop it for uh, 120 times, what do you get? 120 seconds or two minutes. Get the idea? The same thing here, we are going to create that basic time block that we are going to create is two microsecond. Now, you may ask the question, why two microsecond? Why not one microsecond? Why not four? Why not three? Two microsecond is, is actually sufficient. Uh, it is small enough. Uh, in some of the calculation, you see, you can choose a larger number or a smaller value. No problem. You can choose it. Let us go through one, one round of the entire thing. Then I think you'll get a better picture. So for now, this two microsecond is enough. If you create one microsecond, the number of loop increases in order for you to achieve uh, the required time delay. Later, I'll explain to you. Uh, what are the changes that we can do with the time delay? But for now, is it okay if we just assume that the basic time block we're going to create is 2 microsecond? It has to be 2 microsecond because digital hardware are quite fast. So you can't have millisecond as your base time because all the instructions are running in nanosecond. So now, we want to create a basic time block of 2 microsecond. So in order for us to create two microsecond, the question is, how many instruction cycles do we need? Can you do the maths? It's a very simple uh, primary school maths. What, what, what are we going to do here? Earlier, the first step, we found out one instruction cycle is 100 times a second. Then now the second task is we say we want to create a basic time block of two microsecond. So the question asks how many instruction cycles do we need? So what is the maths here? Divide right. What divide by what? Huh? Two microsecond divide by under nanosecond right because you want to know. Our aim here is to find out how many instruction cycles do we need, right? So you have two microseconds that we want to create, and you know one instruction cycle is 100 in a second. So if you divide by 100, of course, what is the answer that you get? You will get the number of instruction cycles, which is 20 instruction cycles. Is that okay? Any question up to this point? Uh, please do ask question uh, because no time for you to go back and study. We are in a very critical situation here. So if you don't understand, just tell sir, I don't understand. Simple. Can follow? So now what we have done so far, first step is we found out one instruction takes how long? It is 100 and second. This 100 nanosecond is dependent on of this, huh? 40. If the frequency changes, of course, your basic time also will change. I mean, we'll go through that the second round. So now we are creating the basic time block of 2 microseconds. So we found out that 
for two microsecond we need 20 instruction cycles so in this case we are going to use nop nop instruction nop has one instruction cycles if you look at the instruction set NOP no operation takes one instruction cycle. So if I want to generate two microseconds, how many NOPs do I need? How many NOPs? You need 20 NOPs, right? So let's say if you have the start of the program and you keep writing 20 NOPs, NOP, 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 NOP. The time that it takes from here, the time that it takes from here to here is 2 microseconds. Why? Each NOP takes how long? 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100 seconds until the 20th. How, how long time has it elapsed? 2 microseconds. Is that okay? Okay or... Q. So when we use NOP, NOP what it does, it does nothing. But it takes that time to execute, right? One in second cycle, one in second cycle. So this is how we, in other words, we can say waste time. We're just buying time here, right? Just put NOP, 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 20 times. The time that it takes to Execute this 20 NOPs is 2 microsecond. Is that okay? So this forms our basic time block. 20 NOPs will generate 2 microsecond. Are we done? Remember, go back to the uh, your wristwatch an uh, analogy. What we have just done is the 1 second, right? So now we have to loop this basic time block to achieve our whatever the required time delay. So in our case, the required time delay is 0 0.5 milliseconds. So what do we do now? How many times do we need to loop this basic time block to achieve 0 0.5 millisecond delay? Very simple math, right? 0 0.5 millisecond divided by 2 microsecond, which is the basic time block. So how much you get? Two hundred fifty. So what is happening here? This twenty NOP, if you loop it two hundred fifty times, it will generate zero point five millisecond. Whenever you do loop, loop will multiply. So if we have here 2 microseconds, and if you want to run it 250 times, it's actually equivalent to multiplying 250. So you will get back. Are you getting back? So we need to loop this 20 NOPs 250 times. So 2 microsecond times 250, what are you getting? 0 0.5 millisecond. Whenever you do looping, it is actually multiplying. Is that okay? So now we are going to apply. Remember just now, in the morning we learned uh, one of my favorite loop structure finite loop structure. So this is, you are going to apply the finite loop structure here. We're going to sandwich it. So remember what is the important thing here? You need to load that loop limit into working register and then you load it into loop count. And then you see that this is the top loaf and this is the bottom loaf, right? And then in between, it's supposed to have 20 NOPs, but here we are only writing 17. The reason is because when we use decrease file register skip if zero, it actually uses up two instruction cycles. 
and branch repeat it uses up one now we ask me why this is two why this is one honestly i don't know i'm just quoting what the textbook says so therefore 17 plus 2 plus 1 you get back how many instruction cycles you get 20 instruction cycles and how many times you're looping this whole thing 250 times once you are done with the 250 time what happens it goes out of the once it reaches 250 what happens it will go out of the loop and it'll end the loop So this is the structure that we did right this morning. So by the way, we're supposed to write 20 here inside 20 NOPs. But remember, default always the decrease will take two and take one. So always we'll minus three, then write 17 NOPs. Any question up to this point? Now, the issue here is, yes, what is the question? Yeah, it's always two. Degrees file registers always two, branch always one. So always whatever the total amount of NOPs that you have, always minus three. Any other question? Yes. No. <laughs> so what you, he was asking is put this 17 times. Now that's where the next point is coming. Uh, to write this 17 times is not that tedious. You can, we are all expert in copy paste control C and control V. Very, very fast we can do it. But unnecessarily it actually takes up 17 lines of your program. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, if something that is the same thing we are going to call, we can actually use macro. We can actually use macro. And there is a standard macro template. This one. This is the macro. And the macro has a name. Loop note means duplicate NOP. And duplicate NOP. Okay. This is a fixed macro. Huh? This is a fixed macro, meaning to say you just need to memorize this if you are using this. Of course, I think like what Fadi said, if you write 17, then you put 17 for me. I think I'll still accept that as an answer. No issue. But in the real coding, you can't do that, right? <laughs> so you have to use this. Instruction, especially for your mini project, definitely you will have delay, so you'll have to use it somehow. So take note, macro. The format is what you have macro and you have and macro right. Then the macro must have a name. In this case, it's duplicate operation, and this macro receives an input argument, kk. And this part here is using a while loop. So what is it doing? It is Declaring a variable, variables i, it's initializing the variable i to 0, while i is less than kk. So kk is your limit. So as long as whatever limit that you put here, what as long as the condition holds true, what do you do? You do NOP, and then you increase the i by 1. So where do you write this duplicate no operation macro? Before the program start template and after your assembler directives. Is that okay? Now what happens when you with a duplication a duplicate no operation macro, how your program will look like? The same thing only. The same thing on top. When you have 
duplicate no operation macro what you will write duplicate no operation you will write the name of the macro right then you pass the argument how many times you want to run the nop 17 and here specifically i have put d 17 17 times if you want to convert to equivalent hex input that's also fine so what happens this d 17 get passed to this k right kk so what is the value of kk here 17 so i from from 0 until less than 17 means how many times it will run until 16 from 0 to 16 is 17 so you'll have 17 nops so the same thing when you have this duplicate operation macro this is how the main program will look like you load the loop uh, loop, uh, loop limit into working register and you load it into loop count and then you call the macro Earlier, there's supposed to be 17 lines of duplicate operation, right? I mean, sorry, 17 lines of NOP. But now you just call the macro. And the rest is the same. So what happens from here to here? From 17 line, it becomes one line. And when you use this macro, before the program start template, you're supposed to write the entire Any question up to this point? So one time from here to here is two microsecond. And if you loop it 250 times, the entire delay takes 0 0.5 millisecond. Any question up to this point? Oh, sorry, I supposed to show here. So all this I'm talking, pointing here. But that's different. No wonder you're so blur. So what's happening here is the single line of duplicate operation is substituting 17 lines of NOP. But the other structure are the same, right? So the duplicate operation, you have to declare it, you have to write, the define the macro before the program start template. Any question up to this point? So, how can we actually use such a delay? Let's say, for example, just for example, after this, we will learn about LEDs. So let's say you want to make an LED blink. You want to make it blink. So this whole structure that you see here is the delay of 0.5 millisecond, right? So what you can do, let's say the task that you want to do is you want to make the LED on and you want it to off. So what do you do? Earlier, you write an instruction to turn the LED on. For how long it will on? For how long it will on? 0 0.5 millisecond. Then after that, LED off. So after you on the LED, you need to call delay. You need to actually apply the delay. So LED on, then it'll delay from for 0.5 millisecond and then off. Then what? Let's say if you want it to continuously to blink 0 0.5 second. Branch? Yes, you have to put another delay. Otherwise, what happens? You on the LED, you put a delay. For 0.5, that delay is what causing the LED to to remain on for 0.5 millisecond, and then you're going to write the instruction to turn it off. You again, you have to write the delay so that it'll off for 0.5. Then you can branch back to LED on. So the structure is supposed to be something like this. 
and this right somewhere here. So let's say you write your LED on. How do we do LED on? You will learn after this. And then what you do? You have your delay for how how long? And then you off. Then you write again the instruction. And then you can branch repeat where the repeat go. LED on. Is that okay? So this delay and this delay is the entire thing here. This one. This whole thing is the entire thing. So I'm just showing you so that you know where do we how do we actually apply the delay. So one example. Huh? One example. Any questions that you all have? If you don't have any question, look at another example. We can apply the same thing. But now here is given 100 millisecond delay. Given the frequency oscillation, 40 megahertz. So what has changed here? The time delay. The frequency is still the same we're maintaining. So what is the first thing that we're supposed to do? Find out the duration of one instruction cycle. And the formula is? 4 times 1 over frequency oscillation, which is 40 megahertz, then you can still get back the same thing, 100 nano. The second thing is what? We want to create the basic time block of 2 microsecond. Same thing happens. 20 instruction cycle. Nothing changed. Now, how many times to loop that basic time block to generate 100 millisecond? 100 millisecond divided by 2 microsecond. And how many loops do we need? 50,000 loops. Now, this 50,000 loop is what you are going to write here. Right? You want to load the loop value well, right to loop counter. My question is is it a valid loop number? Why no? Yes? Count is a register, okay? Coming close to the point. So, exit what? Yes. One file register can only hold 8-bit value, right? Which is, what is the maximum? 255. What is the value here? 50,000 loops. So, it's not possible to do, to load in one, in one loop. So, what, what happens? So you will be needing more than a single loop. So you need more than a single loop. You can't do it in a single loop because one loop counter can't hold that value. So what do we do? We divide by 250. Now you may ask why not 255, why 250? You can use any value. You can divide by any valid value. So I just try to keep it as 250. So 50,000 divided by 250, you get 200. Now, if you divide and if you're still getting a value which is more than 255, again, you divide by 250. So currently, when you divide by 250, you're getting 200. Is this a valid 8-bit value? Yes, so enough. So what this denotes, this is the value for the loop 1 and this is the value for loop 2. 250 and 200. 250 times 200, you get back 50,000. That's why I say when you perform loop, it's actually a multiplication. Of course, uh, you can put loop 1 in 200 and loop to 250, it doesn't matter. Because anyhow, you're going to multiply. So it's no issue. So in this case, what? We need to have two loop counters and two loop limits. So Let's say you can have loop counter 1, you can assign one address. Loop counter 2, assign another address. Remember the macro? So you're supposed to write the macro here. 
duplicate operation then you have the program start template now i'm just writing one single line don't do this you have to write the origin okay if the question says write a program then you need to write the full program if the question says write instruction sequence don't go and write the entire program just write the sequence instructions required only is that clear now here we are going to use the same same structure, the sandwich structure, so how are you going to do is, let me just delete this, so the first thing you are going to do is you are going to load the values, both values into both loop counter. So the first value that you have is 250, you load into loop count 1, and then 200, you load into loop count 2. Is that okay? So now you're making a double loaf sandwich. Is that okay? Uh, I better go get the charger. So you're loading the two values, 250 into the first loop counter and the 200 into the second loop count. Now, of course, these two values are interchangeable. 200, you can write bottom, 250, you can write bottom, 200, you can write above. So it doesn't matter. So you are having a double loop now. And then in between, you have your duplicate operation 17, which is the same thing. But I supposed to have 20. But you are taking in count of 2 and 1. So here, do you see that you have the same decrease structure also? But now, take note that if you are, if your loop count is 2 in the inner loop, then this one also should be 2. So it should be this way of sandwiching. Then if the outer one is, if it's loop count one, then it should be in the outer. Is that okay? Now see here, when you load 200 into loop count two, you run uh, duplicate 17 times, then you decrease loop count two because you are in the inner loop, you are decreasing 200. So this inner loop will run for how many times? 200 times. When it runs for 200 times, what happens? It will skip right. It will skip, it will go here to the outer loop. So now the inner loop count value is already zero. Loop count two is already zero, that's why it is skipping right. Then now it focuses to the outer loop. So the out so what you have done now is 200 you've done once. So you will decrease loop count 1 by 1 and then branch, okay, sorry, here when you have branch repeat, this repeat should go here, right, because you want to repeat the entire 17 plus 2 plus 1, 20, you want to loop that, so branch repeat should be here. Now in the outer loop, when you say branch repeat 1, where should this repeat 1 go? Where should the move uh, repeat one go? Sorry, where? Which which instruction? Where should the repeat one go? Take note that the inner loop now is zero. So where should you loop? You should loop back here. Why? I just mentioned right, that the loop count to is zero already. So what do you need to do? 
when the look count two becomes zero, it branch it goes to decrease look count one, right? So when it decreases look count one, it minuses one. What it indicates? This two hundred times you have done once. You need to loop it two hundred fifty times, right? So when you repeat, why should you repeat? You should go back to load back the two hundred into look count two. Because this one the loop count is already zero. So it will run again for 200 times. And then it will go out. Now it will minus 2. So just now it was 249. Now 248. And again repeat. It load back 200. It will run for 200 times. That 200 times you need to do that for 250 times. And then only you will get 50,000 loops. Any question up at this point? Yes. Come again. Yes. Even for this one? Here, this whole thing is correct. 17 plus 2 plus 1 is 20. Load back all these things. It's very minor. It's very minor. The increment is very minor. So if you are taking consideration of move LW and move WF, all these are 1, 1 only. This is quite negligible because you are only loading it every 200 times once. This one and this one? Yes. Yeah, 17 plus 2 plus 1. Each time you need to loop that. Then 2 plus uh, uh, Two, uh, plus 2 plus 1 but this happens only every 200 times not every time when 1 200 finish then only you add 2 and 1 right so it's not all the time so therefore it becomes very negligible so the point I'm trying to say is here 17 2 and 1 this is you are doing continuously after this 200 finishes, it goes out and yes, this will take 2 and this will take 1. But only every 200 times, which means if it's 250 times, but it's quite negligible. Yes, it will increase the time very, very minutely. It's negligible. It's okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Loop count 1 is loaded with the value 250. Okay. Loop count 2 is loaded with the value 200. So the inner loop here is loop count 2. 